Hello and welcome to the RAST Network. What you're about to hear and see is limited to general financial information only. Please be sure to speak to your financial planner or refer to our financial services guide available at rask.com.au slash FSG before acting on the information. Kate Campbell, welcome to this episode of the Australian Finance Podcast. Yes, it is in fact the Australian Finance Podcast, Owen, <laughs> and we're back as part of our summer series episodes. And today we're all talking about all of those apps and tools that make your life a heck of a lot easier when it comes to your money and your finances. Yes, we are. We are going to talk about things like automation and all those wonderful things you can do sitting right on the couch or wherever you happen to be right now. You could probably do and many things with your money using these apps and these tools. So if you've come to the place where you're thinking, I need to get my stuff together this year, but I also want to do it in a way that's easy, this is the episode for you. I've also asked our friends Anna and Tash, who host the wonderful Get Rich Slow Club podcast, for some of their tips and tricks when it comes to budgeting apps and tools, because they spend a lot of time in that world. So stay tuned for their voices throughout this episode. So Kate, to, one of the most powerful ways people can manage their money, invest, and just take away the heart break of kind of having to look into your bank account and realizing you don't have as much money as you want is to use automation. So there are a bunch of different tools that are rapidly moving towards helping people automate their financial life. What are the, some of the tools that we should be on the lookout for? So there's lots of different parts of your finances you can automate. I think if we start from the, the simplest thing that everyone has in common, automating those bills. So if you can automate things like your water bill or your health insurance or things like that, do it because it's going to save you a lot of stress throughout the year. You're not going to have late notices and things like that. Some of the bills, it's good to have a calendar reminder in every six months or 12 months to renegotiate or see if there's a better deal or call up your mortgage broker if you've got a mortgage to just see if there's a better rate. But if you can automate a lot of the bills, it will save you a lot of a lot of headache during the year, really. Absolutely, it will. Now, I'm going to mention something that is not something we often talk about when it comes to automation. But one of the things that people struggle with is like managing the cash flows of uh, automating your bills. So you often get paid and then you've got a few bills, but then at the end of the cycle, right before you get paid again, you've got another bill that's due and you don't want to default on that loan, uh, that sorry, repayment or something. So you can use a credit card. I'm going to be very careful about how I say this because it's we don't advocate for credit cards whatsoever but they can be used as a budgeting tool if you are just getting started trying to automate your money and save. If you haven't got that emergency fund, you may need to resort to something like this. And what you can do is you can put the, the payments through that, but just make sure you pay it off each and every month. That's the whole point because then you only have to manage one big payment back onto your credit card uh, at the end of every month rather than trying to keep up to date with all the little automations you might need to make. Now, I just want to double click on what you said there about checking in on those annual bills, those bigger bills, definitely shop around. Car insurance, you could save hundreds of dollars every year. And I know when we say that, people are like, yeah, I don't know. That's basically a really nice out night out for dinner. So if you put it in those terms, it takes you 20 minutes to find a better deal. You can go and spend the savings on a, a restaurant, at least you get something for your money. You may as well not pay the finance company extra just for the sake of it. But there are other ways to automate cake. Yeah. Well, one of the things just on you're talking about mortgages is having some sort of property hub. Um, If you do have a mortgage, I have a bank account. It's an offset account that everything related to the property and all of the bills come out of automatically. So that's all in one place and you can see it in one spot. So if your bank account and maybe you might be looking for one that does have these facilities to allow automated payments, but also automated budgeting. So if it categorizes everything for you, that's really helpful. Then you don't have to do it manually. You can always see how much you've spent this month and you can see it broken into different categories because it's so much easier if it categorizes it for you. But you can also set up automated savings as well. So most bank accounts should allow this to be set up, whether it's um, just an amount that you set up every month on the first of the month, $50 goes from your transaction account to your savings account. Uh, some of the more innovative platforms I've used up money in the past where they actually break apart your paycheck when you receive it. So it recognizes, hey, this is your 
$2,000 paycheck from your employer and you can preset how you want it split up. So you might say, mm -hmm. I want 10% as soon as I'm paid to go into my savings account and it automatically does that. And I want 30% in my bills account. Um, so you can do that based off percentage or dollar amount. So that is a really cool feature if you want things to happen in the background cool. automatically and you just want to take some of that mental stress off your plate. And some of the other tools that we talk about a lot on the show, Owen, are ways that we can automate our investments. Yes, absolutely. And I do like what you just said. I use ING with those recurring in, uh, transfers. So one of those might go into an investing account, for example. But it's always, because I get paid around about the same day, I just automate a bunch of payments a few days after that. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are other ways to automate your investing or savings habits. Uh, I just mentioned ING. They have a roundup feature where you can uh, effectively round up into a savings account. Many banks offer that. Um, but there's another one that many people will be familiar with. In fact, about 300,000 Aussies do this as RAISE, formerly called Acorns. RAISE effectively takes that 50 cents off the $4.50 coffee, rounds it up, uh, and then it adds it to a little pool that gets invested for you. And those just get invested through things like ETFs or exchange traded funds, so like diversified, really easy, low maintenance investments for the long term. Uh, and you can use tools like that really easily. But there are other tools like Perla Micro. Perla is a long-term sponsor of the Australian Finance Podcast, so for full disclosure. And they have probably the most, they, in my opinion, they have the best automated investing tool in the country. So basically, you can set up what you want to invest in once, and then it kind of reads your bank statement and it, and it knows, okay, Owen's got a thousand bucks in his uh, investing account now. We'll take that money out and we'll invest it into the things that he's already told us to invest in. So we don't even need to log in to click buy or sell. It does it for me. Uh, another one that does this quite well is Sharesies. Now, Sharesies is a little bit different in that you pay for a subscription for the account and then it automates some investments for you. Uh, you can pick different things that you want to invest in regularly. Uh, but the subscription basically covers them, uh, the the uh, the brokerage fees, the fees you might pay for transactions, and they're moving quicker and quicker towards this auto investing uh, world. Another one that does it in a little bit of a way, not one that I have a lot of familiarity with, is Comsec Pocket Cape. This allows you to invest small amounts, and it just goes into an ETF, an exchange traded fund. I think you need fifty bucks to set it up to begin with, but then it can kind of just keep going and going and going, uh, and that is pretty handy and a lot of people are using it like heaps of people are using that product but all of those like raise perla micro which is a small amounts for perla sharesies and comsec pocket amongst all of them there would have to be over five hundred thousand australians that use them um and so you know we're getting to a world where more and more people are investing through automation they're doing small amounts regularly and that's exactly what we want everyone to take away from this episode automate your savings you can also now automate your investing, and that is super exciting. Mm, I definitely have a few of those apps on my phone, and also being mindful that if looking, if you sort of get stuck looking at the app all the time and looking at your investments, then sometimes it might be a better decision to use the investment platform on your computer or just set things up in the background and not look at it all the time. But something that's helpful to me is also having my super funds app on my phone. Most of the larger super funds will have some sort of app that you can have on your phone. And that's a really good tool to see if your employers paid your super. You can see what your fees are. And also something that I do is I make a small additional contribution each month via BPay and anyone is able to do that. But I can also use the app to quickly go, okay, my money has landed for the month. And that's just a nice little reassurance that, okay, the money is where it's supposed to be. So having your super funds app on your phone, if you think you can manage that in a healthy way, and it's not going to encourage you to make any split second decisions is a good way to monitor it and stay on top of what's going on there. I think you make a really good point there, um, which is that and I think we as a society maybe have got to this point now, maybe it's just us, but um, we see a lot of people, and I think I speak on behalf of both you and I, so I'm speaking directly to you, dear listener, when I say this. We've seen a lot of people that install these apps on their phone and it actually can result in bad outcomes for them because what tends to happen is it's too easy. It's too easy to act emotionally. And the way the rules are set up in Australia you can't, if you create one of these apps, you can't be like, hold on a second, Kate, 
It looks like you're making an impulsive decision to sell that ETF. You probably shouldn't do that for these five reasons. You can't actually do that easily in Australia from a legal perspective. So even if the app developers wanted you to slow down and go, hold on a second, doesn't look like a good idea what you're about to do, they can't stop you. And so it basically requires you to have the behavioral strength to be like, I am not going to make that decision when I'm very scared about my share portfolio. Instead, um, I just want to slow down and sleep on it. Like that's one of the things that we have often said on the show is maybe you, you should delete the app. If you feel like you've set up your automations, it's all good to go, delete the app. And then that way the automations can keep going and you don't have the itchy trigger finger where you're like, oh my God, my shares are down 2% today. I should probably sell out um, because we know that that's just short-term gyration. So um, yes, download the super fund app on your phone, but be very careful. Don't be... T- constantly tinkering with that thing, add extra, check your insurance, but just please don't change things too often. Same with those investing accounts. With great rights come great responsibility. I feel like that's a line from the movie, Kate. But what else is there? What Do we have any other things that we can talk about? Yeah, I think sometimes it's just important to add a little bit of friction. And I was talking to Anna about how she approaches automating her finances and some of the budgeting tools she uses. I used to be the type of person that wanted to track all those things. So I waited until a specific time of month because I wanted to transfer the money over, pay over the bills, do transfer over the um, the investments. And now automating is just a lifesaver now that I've got a handle on my finances. But before then, it was really important to do those things because depending on where you are in your financial journey, sometimes you want to budget. You need to be hands-on so that you can keep yourself more accountable So going to some other suggestions in terms of apps that I think are really helpful are budgeting apps. And there's a whole bunch of them. There's Frollo, Pocketsmith, WeMoney. Um, I may have missed a few, but they're really great to just have a basic understanding of your monthly outgoings and ingoings. So how much you're making and how much you're spending and then additionally how much you're saving. Now, Owen, I know you've had some success this year finding things on Gumtree and Facebook Marketplace. Yes, Kate. Well, most recently, I don't know if I told you this, but the most recent purchase was a bit ridiculous. I actually bought a boat off Facebook Marketplace um, and that was a bit of a bigger purchase. But I've got to admit, I've said it throughout the year that um, one of my friends, I think he's got the best Gumtree game in history. He, every day, instead of going on social media, on the way home, on the train ride home from the city, when he's working in the city, he'll check Gumtree every single day He goes to the cheapest, he goes to the free listings and he just constantly refreshes and he waits for some great bargains to pop up. And so he's looking to buy things for free or very low cost. You got a chainsaw recently for free, you got a whippersnipper, brand new whippersnipper for 140 bucks. Look at us being domesticated. But anyway, that's if you want to buy stuff. You can use Facebook, you can use Gumtree, you can use all those types of things. If you want something done, use Airtasker, get someone around to mow the lawn for you. You don't have to do it yourself or paint your fence in my case. Now, you can imagine yourself on the other side of that equation, you want to get some cash in the bank, you're a bit financially stressed, take a look around. There's a lot of stuff in your very room that you're sitting in that you could probably sell. Maybe there's an old phone that's lying around, like an old iPhone, they're worth so much money. Maybe there's, you know, some quilts or maybe there's, you know, an old fridge. Whatever the case may be, you can sell all of that stuff on Facebook Marketplace in a heartbeat. You can sell it on Gumtree. You can sell it even in the local community groups. And the best thing of all is those platforms are free. The only thing you've got to watch out for is just make sure the person that you're messaging or whoever messages you when you're selling something is genuine. You'll know that because they won't ask you to do anything weird like create a PayPal link or, you know, do you accept Mm -hmm. cash after it's delivered or some weirdness. Just make sure they seem normal. Check their profile on Facebook and um, you'll find that, it's actually pretty easy to make a few grand if you're anything like me and you've got some stuff just lying around. Yeah, I've had a friend lose quite a bit of money selling a laptop online before because they got that digitally edited PayPal receipt that said money has been sent, should arrive in one to two business days. So they posted off the laptop uh, to a PO box somewhere, uh, never to be seen again. So uh, yeah. just being careful out there is really important and just sort of thinking creatively. There's a lot of apps you can use to make a little bit of extra cash. Um, yeah. I also asked Anna and Tash for some of their tools when it comes to saving money on food and groceries. 
What about stuff to help with the cost of living? Are there any apps you guys use, whether it's saving money on petrol or food or eating out? Oh, my gosh, there's so many. Um, Entertainment Book is one that I've been using a lot more recently. They had it on special for 99 cents. And because I spend a lot of time in different parts of Australia, like it's been cool having it in every city. There's often buy one, get one free for meals, which is great. Um, Woolies Rewards as well, their annual membership. Um, I think it's $70 for the year and you get 10% off a shop at Big W and Woolies every month. So as long as you're spending $70, it's worth it, which is good. Other ones I think that are really fantastic is using things like Cashback, Shopback, Top Cashback, all Top very cashback similar is names. Good. They have yeah. like a highest cashback guarantee. So that's been fun. I just have the plugin on my desktop. So every time I'm kind of shopping, it just pops up right away. I also use another plugin called Honey, which gives you coupon codes for things. So it, it not only are you getting a cash back with the cashback apps, so you're making money, you're also saving money because you're using Honey. Um, I also use another one called Camel, 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 which um, compares different prices. So for example, you might see prices go up the closer they get to Christmas. Um, if you use something like that, you can actually see if you're getting the best deal or if it's just a lie as websites do. <laughs> they say it's 50% oh. off, but that's usually the problem. <laughs> like they just jacked up the price for that time or whatever it might be. It was great to hear that you can make money um, and you can earn rewards for doing things or behaving in a certain way. One of my favorite ones, Kate, is actually uh, raise rewards. So I book all of my holidays and work travel through raise and i know this is the investment app that we just talked about but they've got a side of it called raise rewards so what you do is you log into raise and you click on the thing that says rewards and from there you get sent to a unique like raise uh, part of someone else's website and uh, what i do is i have my booking.com account uh, open and so when i go from raise and i go i want to use booking.com I then go across to the booking.com website. I place my order for a hotel or something like this. And depending on which day you do it, the, the exact number varies, but it can be anywhere from say 3% of the hotel cost up to 7% sometimes. And so you can, if you spend 500 bucks, you can get like 30 bucks in your account or something like this just for booking through Raise. And here's the key, key thing. It doesn't cost you any extra. In my research, I haven't been able to say, well, if I book through Raise, it's going to cost me more, surely. No, actually, it's the same price that I was going to get on Booking.com. And as an added benefit, because I'm logging into my Booking.com account when I do it, I also get Booking.com rewards points. So you won't hear me say this again, Kate, but I'm a genius level three on Booking.com just because I use Raise to book, which then goes to Booking.com where I log in and then use that account. So I earn double the rewards just for that simple hack. And after a few years, I got a couple of grand in there. So that goes to show for doing basically nothing, just booking my hotels like I normally would. I've got a couple of grand after a couple of years. And that is awesome. You do book a lot of hotels for work though. We're one right now as we record this. So yes. <laughs> Um, I guess a lot of us are managing cost of living this year and the Energy Made Easy, the government website, is really helpful there if you want to compare your gas mm. and electricity from a more independent comparison site Then sometimes like that's something to be aware of when we mention lots of different tools when it comes to money is there's lots of comparison sites that are around but they don't always include all the options. So it's important to check mm. lots of different places and make sure you're aware of that going in. Um, and Anna shared this really cool tool with me that helps you understand and lower the cost of your power bills. There's one that I use. It's called PowerPal. A while back, and I don't know if this is still on, Victoria had a um, promotion going on where it was free to get it installed and it kind of gets set up to your whole kind of um, energy tracking thing. So it it's an app that you have on your phone. It's also a little physical gadget that's that's set up, like someone comes in and sets it up. And that way we've been tracking our energy. We also have solar. So in the daytime, we kind of pay attention to how that's going. And then we realize that because um, our energy bills or energy, the cost of energy goes down at nighttime, we've kind of timed it so that our dishwasher goes on at night instead of like in the daytime using it during like the most expensive hours. So using something like PowerPal, which is, and there's a couple different ones. There's um, that monitor your energy use is really great to kind of keep costs low when you can. So it's great to save money on utility bills, Kate, um, any type of utility bills, whether it's a 
mobile phone uh, where you can go and maybe sign up at JB Hi-Fi instead of going into the Telstra shop and you might get a huge uh, cash back for buying a new iPhone or starting a new plan. But you should also search your state for any types of incentives. For example, sometimes you can uh, get free LED lights put in your house. So if you want down lights in your house, sometimes you can get free shower heads. Sometimes you can even get cash, cold hard cash, just for comparing energy providers. And the state government wants you to do this because it would probably save them money in the long term and help you get a better deal to ease the cost of living. So Google for your state and search energy incentives or energy schemes and see what comes up. You never know what's on there. Um, we've got one more snippet from Tash and Anna, uh, who had some thoughts about using AI, chat GPT, to help with saving money. Chat GPT is really great for meal planning too. So if there's people out there and you're on a budget and you um, know you have X amount per week, you can actually ask Chat GPT chat GPT to come up with different recipes for you that are within a specific cost that use potentially the same ingredients. So you can make multiple meals with the same type of ingredients. So it can be a way to actually save money. And I've done this a few times as well. So um, for people out there, chat GPT is like great for so many different things. I can use it for so many things. You can ask it to be a personal trainer. So it can be like a free personal trainer. And I ask you like, if you've like put in the right prompts that ask you like age your gender what things you want to work on like the level that you're at and then spits out a workout plan for you which is pretty cool oh and have you used chat gpt to try and save money not to save money i've asked it to save my job a few times but it hasn't worked with my spelling errors so um <laughs> i don't know about saving money but i feel like it could be cool I like the tips about using ChatGPT for helping you with meal planning and coming up with low-cost recipes, um, just telling it what you've got. So that's something I want to try over the summer as well. Yeah, well, hopefully um, we can get an integration between GPT, like ChatGPT and a Thermomix. Uh, and maybe one day we can just be like, hey, uh, can you just create uh, some hash browns for me? Because I'm kind of hungry. And then the Thermomix goes and makes it and cleans itself. Wouldn't that be nice? Um Maybe that's the world that, that awaits us, Kate. But throughout this episode, we've shared a lot of resources and tools. Uh, we're huge fans of making sure you understand what you're signing up for when you do. So always be careful. Always be mindful to read uh, the fees before you sign up. A lot of the things that we've mentioned today, a lot are free. It just requires a little bit of effort and you can close the accounts. But when it comes to anything that's like investing related or financy, Make sure you read the T's and C's on the website. And in particular, you want to make sure that that provider is reputable and has what we call an AFSL, Australian Financial Services Licence. If they're good, they'll have it in the terms and conditions and they'll have the number at the bottom of their website. So you can go and look them up online. Okay, there's a lot in this episode. Yeah, and um, we only mentioned a few that we know of in this episode. So if you have any more that you love using, whether it's an app on your phone, it's a website you're always going to, like the, the Money Smart Compound Interest Calculator, something that I know I use a lot. Let us know via Instagram at Rask Australia or in the YouTube comments if you're watching online. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're on Spotify, you can leave us feedback, answer polls and that sort of stuff wherever you get your podcast. Don't forget, you can leave us a review as well. If you want to help us out, you can do that. Or send us your questions via the link in your podcast player. Just select the Australian Finance Podcast. We love New Year's resolutions and goals and long-term financial thinking. So let us know what you're working on this summer. We'd absolutely love to hear from you. It's why we do it. It's why we record. It's why we publish podcasts. So please let us know what you're thinking, what you're up to, and share any of the tips that you might have. Who knows? It could be on the next episode. Well, okay. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for listening, everyone.